there was a time when one pen was good enough for me. When I didn't find myself in the endless pursuit of one more pen. Always. One more pen. Sometimes two or three more pens. I'm not even ambidextrous. I can only use one pen at a time, but here today, once again, one more pen. Today, the Lamy CP1, allegedly a titanium pen. None of us are quite sure why a pen needs to be titanium, but that doesn't stop us. That has never stopped us from buying and collecting pens of weird, excessive materials. But this one doesn't really seem that excessive. In fact, it's not very exciting to me at all. I bought this pen because I had previously bought a different titanium pen and I wanted to compare this one to that one. And when I bought this one on Amazon, the name of the listing was Lamy CP1 Titanium Fountain Pen Black Medium. But now the name of the listing has been changed. It just says Lamy CP1 Medium Nib Fountain Pen black. The, the word titanium is nowhere to be found and I'm not sure at all whether there is any titanium to be had in this pen at all. It describes the nib as steel and the, the clip as steel and there's a matte black lacquer finish. It says that the designer is Gerd A. Mueller who also designed the Lamy ST and the Lamy 2000. Incidentally, the Lamy 2000 is one of my least favorite Lamy designs. Also one of the most popular Lamy designs and very expensive. But this pen just doesn't do a whole lot for me. It reminds me of the Uniball Roller Micro. A very cheap and comparatively functional and aesthetically pleasing pen to me. That you can buy at Office Depot for a dollar or something. Also, this pen, despite being $50 or so, didn't come with a piston converter, which a lot of much cheaper pens do ship with. And so I was forced to write with the blue ink that shipped with it, which put me in a bad mood right off the bat. I tried to use a Coeco piston converter. It didn't work. It didn't fit. I even tried to use a different Lamy piston converter from a different Lamy pen, a Lamy Safari. That also didn't work. So here I was, stuck with the blue ink in a pen which, at first in my initial tests, worked pretty well, but once I started drawing, gave me some troubles, and I mean, I made it through the drawing, but this pen just doesn't do a whole lot for me. And when it really comes down to it, I don't think there's any titanium to it because if there was any titanium why would you cover it with paint there's no practical application of titanium in a pen nobody is sitting around with their pens saying hey my pen isn't strong enough i need to make it out of titanium instead of steel or plastic or whatever i need to make it out of titanium the only reason to make a pen out of titanium is so that people know it's titanium, so that it looks cool and feels cool, and if you can't see it or feel it, then what's the point? Why paint over it with this matte black lacquer? Plus, if you look on the inside of the pen when you unscrew it, you can see a kind of golden brass looking metal where the plastic, very cheap feeling plastic threads into the metal body of it. And I'm just almost completely and entirely unimpressed by this pen. And I was a little bit confused because there were good reviews for the pen. A lot of people seemed really happy with it, which I guess makes sense because I'm just one person and there's a lot of different people out there 
who like different things and expect different things. But as I drew with this, I don't know if you can tell, but I was drawing pretty quick and uh, I started out kind of frustrated. I was, I was trying to let the frustration go out of me. Frustration with different things in my life, right? I was trying to let it out through me, through the pen, onto the paper, and into the art with the quick scribbling, which kind of eventually turned into this weird portrait of a person. And then it, it, it gradually turned in less, it, it became less frustration with various things in my life and more frustration with the pen itself because it started to frequently railroad, which is when the two, well, the, the nib of the pen splits apart. There's like two tines of the pen and then you get two very narrow, uh, thin lines instead of one nice, thick, juicy line, right? So that's kind of a malfunction, even though it's sometimes nice if you can figure out how to do it on purpose, especially for calligraphy and stuff like that. Uh, and then sometimes it just flat out wouldn't work. I'm not sure what I was doing. If I, There's always the chance that I could have been doing something wrong, but I don't think I was. And once again, one of my main hangups was with this is that I think there really is a difference between this thing just looking boring and the minimalism that I mostly uh, and usually desire these days. I'm, you know, I'm no pen designer, so I don't obviously necessarily know what that fine line is, but this one is on the wrong side of it, in my opinion. Also, I really have to repeat that that the, the plastic section that holds the nib where you hang on to it, the grip, it just feels really, really cheap. And uh, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't know what else to say, except that I was disappointed. How the pen looked, felt, performed, and how it forced me to use the ink that it came with. I guess I could have really tried a, a little harder with a syringe, uh, etc., or ordering other cartridges that fit. It did say that, uh, that there are other piston converters that you can order. But I mean, it does. You can't even use other Lamy piston converters that I already have. That, that those don't work with it. So I don't know. It was just a frustrating experience for me. And that's all. All right. That's it. Okay. Here's a here's a drawing for you of a perfectly sculpted face. All right. Goodbye, everyone.